Hey everybody, welcome back inside the stash. It is that time of the by month again. Where we take a look at what I've gotten in recently. Yes, it's time for show and tell. Um, I will say that if you do not want to if you do not wish to watch show and tell, by all means, feel free to skip on to the next video. Nobody's forcing you to watch this. Do the one person who gave the last one a thumbs down. Not that that bothers me, but it's just kind of ignorant, because, you know, if you don't want to watch me talk about stuff I bought, then... <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we got a couple of uh, new tool things in. I am the world's worst Tommy a tool whore, to a certain extent. I don't have everything they make, but I have a great deal more than I probably actually have any real productive use for. And then uh, we have quite a bit of kits. We talked about a lot of decals the last time around. Now it's time to talk about some model kits. Uh, this looks worse than it really is because I've been hanging on to doing this video for a little while. Uh, I bought a couple of tools and it wasn't enough to like make a video about the tools. <sighs> that would be silly. And then I got in a box from Yahoo Japan Auctions. And by the time I sort of caught up with life, as it were, and got around to doing the video, I had another box that I had to ship over from Yahoo Japan Auctions. And... The day that showed up, well, then it was time to ship the things from Hobby Link Japan before they started shipping themselves as well. So we just hung on to it until we had everything here. So uh, with enough of that uh, palaver out of the way, we're going to flip the camera and uh, show you what we got. All right, so first up on our uh, tool tour, as it were, I got this. <laughs> These are 200 magnets. They are... 2 millimeter by 1 millimeter, so you're looking at two sleeves of 100, basically. Uh, these are, oh, I can't remember what the heck they're called now. <laughs> I, I've talked about them so much when I got them, and then it's been a couple weeks, but these are, like I said, just itty bitty, bitty, itty bitty, bitty, bitty things. Um, you could maybe see each one of those little lines in there is a separate battery, and they're 2 millimeter outside dimension by 1 millimeter thick. Uh, the reason why I purchased these, other than the fact that always that having tiny magnets is just cool, is that uh, I've been sort of plunking around in the background with a Fujimi Honda Integra Type R DC2, and that car, if you build it with the big basket handle spoiler on it, like I want to, there's no real uh, even Steven way to mount the spoiler. There's no like pins in the spoiler holes in the deck type of thing. There's no grooves in the body to sort of indicate where the spoiler goes. You're just sort of on your own uh, slapping a thing on there. And, of course, you could glue it on prior to paint, but then you're trying to paint, you know, upside down and around and all that sort of thing. So my thought was, because I have a couple of other ideas for this as well, why don't I pick up some teeny tiny magnets? And that way I can just sort of uh, position the spoiler onto the body, trace out the, you know, area it belongs to, get a nice centering on both uh, with a set of calipers and then just drill out and I think with as strong as these magnets are one per side one per pylon if you will of the spoiler probably gonna do it so that way uh, if the show if the show if the car ends up being show quality because I don't actually build for competition I just if the car comes out nice enough I'll go ahead and take it type of deal uh, that way there's never any like just intense pressure to just build straight for shows and stuff like that. That you know, it's just to me personally, I can accept the flaws of my own uh, skill level, as it were, easier if I'm not t intentionally building for competition. It's always like, oh, hey, this comes out, this came out nice. I think I think this could go go ahead and be a show vehicle. Try to build everything well, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't go that way. All right, if I take it to shows, having these things being held on with the magnets maybe be make it so I am able to. If I could just speak, uh, take the spoiler off and transport it to shows without worrying about busting the spoiler off. And then I can just plack, snap it back on when I get there. And if not, well, it'll just be a fun uh, experiment in just uh, dealing with, with uh, magnetizing some stuff. A couple other, like I said, a couple other uh, projects in the future I could see where, I could, where these magnets would come in handy. Uh, do I need 200 of them or 100 pairs of them? No, I don't, but that was the smallest amount of these you just could order. And it was like $6 for 200 of them. So, yeah. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> so, uh, those will go onto the tool pile at some point. Now, the actual uh, Tamiya tools that I picked up, 
was the, uh, I got one of their um, pin vices. Now, they sell the pin vise in like three different formats. Um, I think they all basically do the same thing in terms of what outside dimension of a, of a drill bit they'll accept. Uh, I got the fine pin vise DR, which is for damn reflective, apparently. <laughs> the, the DR, uh, I believe it stands for like deluxe rubber, <laughs> and I'm not even joking about that. Because the only difference between this one and the fine pin vise R is this rubberized grip that is on the uh, handle itself. The R is just, or the uh, D, or oh, no, excuse me, I think it's just the R. The R uh, doesn't have this; it's just a just a metal uh, pin vise. And then there's also like an S, which I, I'm assuming is like standard, which is a slightly, I, I believe it's like the same height as far as. Uh, chuck the end of the shaft uh, uh, height, but it's a much thinner pin vise. This is a nice big old fat one for fat American hands. I ended up actually buying this in the United States because they were out of stock most places in the uh, in Japan as far as vendors went, and the few of them that I saw on eBay, um, I just could not tolerate paying more than I was going to pay for in the United States. This was you know, a higher price, like these are yen item or yen price at. Uh, 1600 yen. If I can get the background to, to zoom out, come on, it's too reflective, it won't focus. But anyway, it's a 1600 yen pin vise, so that's around $15 with the exchange rate right now. I think I paid $22 for this total, which had free shipping involved. But to buy this from a Japanese reseller on eBay was going to cost me more than that, so it was actually cheaper to buy it in the United States. So I got that, and then because I have pin vices, like, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. I have pin vices. I have two different ones. Um, I think I can probably grab the one real quick just by looking behind me here. I have this pin vise, and I'm not sure it's a Habako pin vise. I don't know where I got this pin vise from. I think this pin vise actually was something that I won at the Toledo NNL way back when. Like, I didn't go this year. This past weekend was the last N Toledo NNL. Uh, I didn't go this past weekend because, again, we're going to be going out of town at the end of the month, and it was, uh, where do I want to spend my travel budget? And I decided that moving, which is going to be happening, was slightly more important than going to the, the uh, show in Toledo. But this, you know, it's basically the same length, uh, but it's a little thinner, and um, I love that it has, like, a pocket protector thing. I could stick this, you know, the all the, all the many times I've needed a pin vise at work uh, in my nerdy office job. But uh, I don't know where the drill bit went. I had one drill bit, which sounds awful. Uh, but I'd, I did uh, custom police cars, which I've told you guys about before. It sort of held me over in the hobby in the sense of still being in the hobby even when I was out of it, per se. Because uh, I really came back into the hobby in 2007 uh, from having, you know, from being building all the time as a kid to building again as an adult. In the meantime, in between, say, about 1997 and 2007, I was doing some uh, custom police cars in the background. And I had one drill bit that I used to drill out antenna bases for guitar wire metal antennas because nothing looks better than, nothing looks like a metal antenna like a metal antenna. And... So I had one drill bit, and I had two pin vices. I had another one. This is the only one I found digging through boxes of old crap uh, as I started cleaning out the basement to do this whole, you know, office that I have back here now. Um, but I don't know where the hell the drill bit went. So having no drill bits and having a crappy pin vise, I decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and Tommy a whore up my drill bits. So I bought this whole package here from Hobby Link Japan. Uh these are all fine drill bits that are designed to fit into the fine pin vise. And all of these individual bags here in the back are different single bits. This right here is a 0 .99, 0 .9 millimeter. Uh, let's see if this one will show. This is a half millimeter. And so I have individual uh, drill bits because they're like three bucks a piece. And I thought that was a reasonable price, I thought, for a drill bit. From 0.1 millimeter through 0.9 millimeter, so there's you know what nine drill bits individually, and then I got this package set 
with this box because all of these are eventually going to take out of the packages and we'll chalk them into these into this one box so that they're all in the same place. But this has a, a one millimeter, one and a half millimeter, two millimeter, two and a half millimeter, and three millimeter uh, drill bit. Three millimeter being the biggest uh, drill bit that these pin vices will accept. And I found that you know over the course of time, I most things I see drill out flash over hole things seem to be 1, 1 1.5 or somewhere in the bottom end of the below uh, one millimeter range. Um, I look at a Hasegawa thing here recently where it was drill out 0.8 millimeter holes. So yeah, I've got my Tommy Atoll whore on and I feel good about myself. And then the one last thing we're going to grab out of the Hobby Link Japan box is we'll go through the kits in it separately once we get through all of the, the uh, Bai, uh acquisitions is this set of decals, which is the only set of decals in the in this update. <clears throat> this is the Studio 27, obviously. Carbon fiber detail set for the... It's TS-050. Um, when these were listed, it was TS... Like the letter O, 50. <laughs> As they dance around the licensing. It's Studio 27 like they like to do. Um, if I can stop dropping them, that'd be great. Uh, this is obviously for the Tamiya 24 Hours of Le Mans car, the, you know, the car that won the 2018 Le Mans. Also won the 2019 Le Mans. There's going to be, uh, I believe in, there's going to be another version of that kit release. It's got a really wacky number that doesn't correspond with like any other number that Tamiya has ever used in the kit series. So I'm kind of interested to see what that's going to be about. It says 2019. Uh, and the pictures that are attached to it right now are showing the WEC livery, which has the DHL headers on the door numbers instead of the 24 Hours of, of uh, Le Mans ones. It doesn't necessarily surprise me that they're reissuing it when the car won Le Mans a second time in a row, and there is a slightly different livery package from 2018 to 2019, so they can re-adjust re, uh, the decals and reissue the kit very quickly, uh, but you will still need carbon fiber if you want to do the carbon fiber. So there's two sheets here. There's one big sheet here in the back and then this half sheet in the front. Obviously you can see this stuff doesn't just end here. It goes the whole way down. It is a two-sided instruction sheet. So there is another side to this piece of paper on the flip side of it that will detail like the interior pieces and stuff like that. This is just giving you basically uh, carbon fibering around the headlights. And I know that's, that's included in the kit decal as far as carbon fiber, but um, arguably I think these look a little bit better. Um, Gives you carbon fiber surrounds for the uh, headlight covers, uh, the canards. It's, it's um, the inside suspension piece. This is the front uh, front lip of the front spoiler, and then this is sort of the side pieces. A couple pieces in the front piece. What I like, like about these is they do include some yellow weave for those areas. Um, if you build the kit, it tells you to paint the things like desert yellow which is a fair approximation of this color, I'll give you that, but it doesn't have, doesn't yellow out of the out of a bottle, it doesn't have a weave pattern to it like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these are uh, not necessarily required, obviously. I'm not going to tell you that you have to carbon fiber or, you know, something you're building because that's your model, you do what you want with it. But I think this will certainly make your TS-050 look better. Uh, and there's a, you know, the kit comes with a certain amount of carbon fiber, but not a whole heck of a lot. And this obviously fills a great deal more out of it, especially the inside. And, uh, you know, you could argue that it doesn't need inside decals because, um, you know, there's not really much of the inside you can see, but you'll know it's there, I guess. So anyway, those decals are out there and available. They shipped back in like June and then they sold out immediately. And it didn't seem like they were going to bring them back. And then all of a sudden they decided to rerun them this month. So if you didn't get a set, because these I actually got these back in July, uh, they are back available again uh, in another reprint of them. So that uh, wraps up sort of the oddball randomness of the con box contents. So now we're just going to plow through kits. Let's just get them done as fast as we can here. Uh, of all the things I have, I got three civilian kits. Everything else is a race car. The one civilian kit that I got from uh, Bai is this. It is the uh, older... I'm trying to think what the copyright is on there. See if I can tip it over and see. doesn't say. But this is a Fujimi Europe kit. Um, <clears throat> which is funny because I bought a Fujimi Europe kit in Japan. Uh, this is the High Mechanism or the High Mecha series. <clears throat> 
<coughs> Salika 2.8. Um, these high mecha kits, they've released more, they've more or less released, I think, two thirds of them at this point. I don't believe that they've reissued recently, anyway, the high mecha version of the Salika Supra. And I don't believe that they've reissued recently the high mecha version of the Toyota Soar. Now, the Toyota Soar is also the same one that Tamiya did, and the Tamiya kit is fairly easy to find still. What this does is take this from being a weird curbside and turns it into a weirdly proportioned full detail kit because you do get a full detail engine in here as well as sort of an insert for the inside of the firewall. Uh, also get a better chassis underneath of this because the curbside one was motorized. It does give you a weirdly proportioned body, unfortunately, because of the fact that this is another one of those, hey, it was on a universal chassis, so we scaled the car to fit the chassis kind of thing. Um... I don't... Maybe Tamiya's is a little bit better. Maybe Yeoshima's is a little bit better. Unfortunately, the Celica's... All of the Celica Supers of this generation were all done back in the 1980s. And no one's done a new one. And I'm assuming no one will ever do a new one on the basis of, well, the kits of them already exist, so there's no point in doing a new one. But... It's just an oddly... Well, mine's got a nice really warped hook, roof to it, too. That's nice. I didn't notice that when I looked at it the first time. But it's not exactly the most proportionally correct car. And as I said, it doesn't help that this is leaned over like that. But a little bit of a little bit of hot water will take care of that. Plus sticking the glass up inside because it's got a one-piece glass. So that will straighten the roof out. But it is what it is in the sense. And, um, you know, you get a slightly better chassis as far as the motorized nature of it. Um, and then you get do get, like I said, a complete engine. There's a transmission there because while the transmission is molded into the chassis plate, uh, these are were tooled up similar to the way the uh, Enthusiast Series were, where they give you an engine stand to display the engine separately if you want to go that way <coughs> with it. So that uh, that one has come in, and you know, I said happy to have it. Let's see what one of the, this is the nineteen. 1998, August of 1998 is when I when this kit was reissued, and so I got uh, one of those. So happy to happy to have it, even though it's not the greatest thing in the world. <coughs> and so my race my race car kits here sort of break down between rally and road, and so we're gonna do the rally kits real quick because they are very repetitive. <laughs> so you guys may know I picked up a 2001. Um, I'm just annoyed by the the anger, angle of this camera here. Hang on, guys, let's. See if we can't get this straight. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. No, it's not leaning all cockeyed. Uh, I picked up a 2001 Peugeot 206. Um, I can't even tell you why necessarily. It was really cheap, that's why. And then I accidentally picked up a second one, which we're not going to show you, but just know I picked up a second one. You guys know I picked up a second one if you watched the last Inside the Stash video because, of course, I bought decals for the spare one. So the... Peugeot 206, in real life, won the driver championship in 2000, 2001, 2002. And, or, uh, I'm not sure it won the driver championship in 2002, but it won the manufacturer championship in 2002. In 1999, uh, it was entered into a couple of the last races of the year uh, to test out the car, which is what this is. This is the 1999 version of the kit with the SO oil livery. Decals look pretty decent in here, and there are replacement decals for this car, uh, should you wish. And, uh, yeah, and you get the sort of this, the uh, Tour de Course version. I have plenty of Tour de Course cars to build anyway, so I'm, I'm good with the rally choice. And then we picked up the 2000 version, which is the first of the uh, silver cars. Uh, I believe this is the driver's champ... I believe they won the driver's championship with this car. Um, if there's an English version commentary on here, there is not. I'm trying to figure out what rally this belongs to. It's Monte Carlo. I should have known that. This is Rally Monte Carlo right there. So anyway, it's a 2000 car. This has a, a slight... I has, think it has the same set of wheels. I think this is pretty much the 1999 kit, uh, just in a different livery, because the car raced in 1999 was, was a sort of a lead-in into the 2000, uh, 2000 season, 206. And then we got picked up another 2001 by accident. And then we got the 2002. This is the uh, winning Riley version here. You see got a couple of guys there in the background. They're super excited about the fact that I bought this kit. And this has the 
Another version of the total livery. The total livery came in in 2000, uh, the 2000 season, and it ran in 2001-2002. This is the New Zealand Rally, so it's a little bit more off-roady. It's got some Oz racing wheels, so a different set of of rims in this. And, uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, Includes a couple of driver figures. I think all of them have driver figures on them, actually, but there's that. And then I've got the... 2003 season version. Now, this is a Marbo liveried car uh, in the Monte Carlo Rally. This did include, and the reason why I bought this one specifically was it, it comes with a set of, of um, they said Studio 27. It's just a little sheet of decals about this big of Monte, of uh, Marlboro uh, sponsorships. I'd have to actually look at the real car and see where exactly they belong. Because <laughs> I think. I don't know if the, if basically these rally placards are incorrect, and they 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 need Marlboro here because a lot of times when you have Marlboro decals, they they go over the number placards. Uh, but it is um, you know pretty much the same thing. This reverts. This has a slightly different, couple different, slightly different parts to it, but reverts back to the original set of wheels. And uh, yeah, there's that. I mean, there's a picture on the side of the of the real car, but I'm wondering if the Monte Carlo. Uh, uh, decals or the Monte Carlo, you know, livery hasn't been taken off here. Shows the, this one with these uh, other wheels on here. I'm not totally sure. I'm going to take a peek because I just picked this, just got this in a couple weeks, a couple days ago, and I haven't actually had a chance. So it does come with those wheels. Does it come with the original ones? It does come with the original ones. So it has both sets of wheels in here. So you get a free set of, of, of uh, rims in this, if nothing else. Um, here's this little sheet of Marlboro <laughs> decals. I'm sure like, that, like I said, I, I, obviously the black ones go where the on the white parts of the car and the white ones go elsewhere. Yeah, we'll see. I'll take a, like I said, take a peek, take a peek at the real car and see where those are supposed to go. I'm assuming the, the black one probably goes on the, on the uh, white part of the spoiler back here. So anyway, there's that. And then last one, and this is the last of the kits. I do, there, I think there are two more of these that I don't actually own. And I don't have any intention of buying because they're just variations of existing cars. But this is the last one that they made <clears throat> in 2005. It is the Bosian Racing version. This was a privateer entry at this point because in 2005, Peugeot, as far as their factory team, had moved on from the 206. But the 206s, of course, were still floating around out there. <clears throat> And uh, they issued this kit with the privateer livery on it. So that was pretty cool. Uh, this will look you know, nice to your uh, Subaru WRX if you choose to build that one as a 2005 Monte Carlo car. And uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, you know, pretty pretty basic. This is, uh, I think it only is a Monte Carlo rally as far as the livery goes. Um, this is a kit that you have to find one with good decals, right? Because there's... If, if if even if you can't find a good set of, of decals for the 2003 car, there's a complete and total replacement livery from museum collection available, and Shunko makes uh, replacement versions for the 99, the 2000, the 2001, and the 2002 cars. So if you wanted to build them box stock, and by the way, these are all going to be not so much box stock, although they probably will be. Uh, I got to take a look and see if we'll, you know how easy they are to find. Uh, the photo etch from Studio Twenty Seven for these that are that you know at least puts gives me this grill mesh up front here, um, but the, the overall just is they're all going to be built as the box livery. Um, you know, building if you want to build them as box livery, replacement decals exist for everything except this. I don't believe I've seen a replacement set for this specific car. Uh, these are cartograph decals in here, so they're these ones are still you know nice and nice and crisp and fresh and whatnot, but this kit's never been reissued. Some of the other 206s are in and out of the catalog as far as being available. So, at any rate, that's that. So that takes care of my Peugeot 206 collection that I didn't realize I needed. <clears throat> I picked this next rally car up because, well, it was cheap. And you can't go wrong with a cheap Tommy kit, I don't think. So I got picked this up. This is a 1999 season, I believe. Ford Focus World Rally Championship. This is a very interesting study in box art as far as I'm concerned 
because obviously this is a martini livery car. You know, if you've worth your salt, you realize that these stri these blue and light blue and dark blue stripes on a car are a martini livery car. But there's no martini livery anywhere on this box art until you tip it over on the side, and then there's a martini livery right here. So this is a, yeah, 1999 Monte Carlo rally, and if you flip it around onto this side, it shows you the martini livery, whoops, that's not quite on camera, martini livery on the hood, a martini livery on the trunk, but they scrubbed the martini livery off this picture of the car. <laughs> Which makes me think that the Marlboro, the picture of the Peugeot with the Marlboro not having Marlboro liveries on the real car is also a piece of Photoshop. But the Martini livery is in here. I'm not sure why the Martini livery isn't on the box art, because the Martini car, you know, they reissued the, the uh, Alfa Romeo Martini car, and that had Martini livery on it. They do the Jägermeister uh, Porsches and stuff. They all have Jägermeister. I don't know. But anyway, it's a curbside. Whoops, that was down further than I wanted it to be. But it's a, you know, it's a Ford Focus. Yeah, yeah. This was like the reason why I bought this again is it, you know this is a 19, I think this is an original 1999 kit. Uh, my decals look pretty decent um, as far as I can tell. I think I stuck them in the instructions here. Where they go? Where to go? Where to go? Here they are. Um, so this is sort of your basic decal sheet that has all of the martini liveries on it, and then these are the striping packages that come with it, all of the martini stripes. So they all look like they're pretty decent. Got a couple of little crease marks in there, but I'm pretty sure those will sort of fold their way out as it were uh, when you build it, when you apply the decals. Hopefully they'll still be decent enough. I don't know, I didn't look to see if there were replacement decals for this. I'm pretty sure I've seen a bunch of decals for Ford Focuses. Just in general, uh, I think Tommy did two or three more. I think he did a 2000, 2000, 2001, 2002 season cars. Uh, and then Pasagawa did 2002, 2003, 04, 05, and 06, I think, as far as this. If you want to build a whole bunch of Ford Focuses, the options are available out there for you. And then the last of the rally kits that we're going to talk about today is this one, which is probably a little bit too big to fit on the screen. <laughs> Predictably, it was. I thought it would be. And it is the uh, Peugeot 405, the Paris Dakar rally winner. Um, these are, I don't know, these things just uh, amuse me to no end. It's its like a car on a truck chassis. Um, this is just a cool, I mean, the Paris Dakar rally, I mean, it's just a cool race in general. Um, these kits have never been reissued, I don't believe. And this is a... 1990 release and there is another one of these you probably have seen it the car's facing the other way it is a yellow yellow it is camel sponsor so it's a yellow car um these are kind of hard to find at a decent price this one i happened to luck into it was one of those deals where i was just going through kits on things that were, were ending soon and this happened to be ending like in like five minutes or something like that nobody had bid on it and it was like $25, which is ridiculously low prices for these. These tend to go for $50, $60 even in Japan at this point, just because they're at this point 29 years old and nobody has and they haven't been reissued, um, which is probably a lot of uh, Tommy kits. We talk, talk about why Tommy kits are expensive, but you get this uh, big extended <laughs> body because the whole back half of the car is uh, separate, so you can take it off to show off the engine and stuff like that. My decals don't look terrible. Um, my Pioneer stuff down here in the corner, it's showing up to you guys a little bit whiter than it really is in real life because of the LED light that it's underneath. But overall, I mean, things don't look too terribly bad. There's some weird, like, smudging on these decals. Uh, there are replacement decals available for this from Shunko. I don't think they include any of this, uh, metallic teal blue sort of color. It, it's almost a different color on the box <laughs> as far as what the... What this is supposed to be, I'll look in real life and see if it's supposed to be blue and these are just faded, or if they're um, it's supposed to be this color and these box print is darker than it should be. But at any rate, um, there's two different cars in here, the 204 and the 206, and the roof decals, I think, are the difference between the two. But, uh, yeah, the, I mean, as it, as it stands, it builds the winning car from the 1989 Dakar, I believe. 
And so that was just a cool find to find at a reasonable price because of how expensive these kits tend to be. So happy to have that one just because I think it's a cool, uh, cool piece of, of uh, history, if nothing else. So we move on to road cars. Got one kit here. I think pretty much is the one that everyone loves but hates is this. It is the D2 sponsored. Uh, AMG DT2, and what was I going to say? Please focus a little bit clearer. Thank you. Uh, this is the one C class that I was missing as far as kits. I have the the Tyback and I have the uh, the Sonics car, um, or the Pro Market car. It's Tyback Sonics on one delivery. Um, <laughs> the reason why the people hate this kit, aside from the fact it's never been reissued, and so the decals are all yellowed in all of them is the way that Tamiya laid out these decals. And it's it doesn't necessarily not make sense, but it makes for a really crappy decaling experience. I plan, my plan, because these decals are not shot, but they're probably not good enough to use, is to redraw them. Um, I don't necessarily know that I want to redraw them for, like, public consumption, although, like, if I redraw them, and I tell you that I redraw them, and you guys are all like, hey, can I get a set? I might be able to hook you up with one for a certain price, but at any rate, when Tamiya did these decals, they clear-coded entire sections of the car. So, like, the entire hood decal is one big piece. The entire roof decal is one big piece. The entire side of the car, going over this complex sets of shapes around the fenders, and the in this in the movie, the striker panel on the car for the street car, uh, all one piece, and it makes for a really lousy decaling experience because obviously these this car is not flat, right? It's it's many many faceted. So here are my decals. Um, the as far as the uh, the uh, actual kit decals, I, the, there's two. They're broken up in two sets. There's this set which has like the all the words and stuff on it, maybe, if we can get this to focus. It's got a protective sheet over it, so, this, so it's being all funny. Uh, I'm not necessarily too worried about, like, the carbon fiber and stuff like that for it, mainly because uh, Studio 27 did a carbon fiber decal sheet for the C-classes, and it includes the carbon fiber for the seat and stuff. But this is the actual decal sheet for the car. You can see this is all stained up. Probably not usable, but you get the idea of what I was talking about in terms of the way this is. This is the hood decal, this is the roof decal, this is the left side of the car, the right side of the car, this is, um, like, coming, this is the, the, uh, left side of the car coming over the A-pillar, it's just really dubious as to how this was done, with these being one big sheet of, of decal, basically, um, yeah, these are toast, I just went over part of it and it was cracked, but at any rate, um, because all these DT, D2 liveries are, Obviously, the same D2, this great big one. All these white ones are the same thing in the background. I'll just point out this one since it's easier to see. Um, it, it, as far as redrawing these, it's very easy because you just need to make this D2 shape and then convert it to being white and instead of being you know, a colored thing and then just repost them as many times as you need to. Obviously, sometimes you're going to need to chop pieces of them off to make them fit. My idea here, guys, when I do these decals is that things that are within range, reasonable range of these big things, like if you look at this hood decal, there's a D2 here, here, there's a D, half of a 2, and things like that that uh, exist around this. I'll clear coat those around the, you know, with this thing, but all of these ones that are on the outside edge, they're going to be individual. Now, that'll make your decaling experience take forever, I realize, but oh my god. The thing I see with these this, this, this set of decals, even if you can find one that isn't kind of trashy like this, is that even if you think the D2s are white, and some of these ones on these on here aren't too bad as far as the color of the, of the white. Some of them are actually still pretty white considering how old they are. But this clear coat <laughs> that it's on is obviously yellowed. And I see people, um, not a lot necessarily, because I don't see too many of these built anymore, mainly because they're so old and so expensive. But I see people uh, getting into situations where the D2s are white, but the clear coat is all yellowed on them. And then they build this car, you know, because the, the kit's silver, molded in silver, and then obviously you paint it silver on top of it. But people build it and then their silver ends up being sort of a dirty steel color when it's all said and done with because 
the all that clear coat on the hood and the roof and the sides ends up, you know, changing the color of the paint underneath. So we're definitely, like I said, gonna gonna take care of that issue. And so I decided, and why not really? Because at this point, who doesn't need a couple more? That I needed some more Porsche 956s. I don't know why. I have no idea. I, I blame other people. I, I'm very gullible in the sense of, of uh, wanting to be the cool kid. Now, uh, I just... I have one 956 already. I bought it off eBay. It didn't have a box. It didn't have... It was out of the bag. Um, there was like... A, I got a Ziploc bag of parts that are broken off the parts tree and stuff like that. The decals were stuck to the instruction seats. So even if they weren't forever old and already ruined, they're even more ruined. Uh, these kits came out originally in 1984 uh, and 1985. So they're really old in general, but uh, decals do exist to replace uh, certain ones of these liveries. Uh, and so I picked up an original. Uh, I need to tip this back down because we're not dealing with that big-ass Peugeot kit anymore. Uh, so the original, the 1983 uh, 24 Hours of Le Mans winning Rothman's livery uh, car. Decals in here are shot. That's okay. I already have a set from Shunko. Uh, as far as the replacements go, to do them. Now, Shunko doesn't give you all of this blue on the bottom, but I don't necessarily believe this decal sheet does either. They do give you the insides here, so you don't have to do that weird two-tone uh, with the wing, because the wing is white on the outside, but it's Rothman's blue on the inside. And, uh, yeah. I mean, why not? I wish Studio 27 would do a carbon fiber decal sheet for this car. Uh, I'm sure there's something on it that's carbon fiber. But uh, what I found interesting about this, other than the... Uh, the fact that the Rothmans livery isn't shown on the outside of the box, but it's clearly shown on the instruction sheet. And here's the decals that you get with it out of the box. So you got to paint the blue anyway. Uh, all the Rothmans on these are, are old, and they're they're very they're also cracked when you look at them off color. So these are these are unusable unless you unless I wanted to redraw them. But right now with the place that I do get my decals printed, I can't do the gold that's in the globe of the Rothmans livery. So just buy the aftermarket ones to be done with it. Um, is of, of these boxes, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different ones. Like on the side of here, there's a, a Trust 956 and an Iseki Tractor version as well. And then on this side, there is the Newman car and the Cannon car. Now, if you know your your uh, your liveries, and maybe these are other cars that ran in 1983, and I think they are. Um, they did the Newman car for 1984, and they did the Cannon car for 1984. I don't understand what the what the point of putting these other cars on the box were because they didn't release these specific liveries. I, I believe that you can pick up a 1983 set of the Newman livery, um, and, but I've never seen the 1983 sets for either the Trust or the uh, Nasiki. And I think uh, the Isiki is actually an 84 car looking at because it's the same driver. But be that as it may, I think those are also WEC cars and not necessarily Le Mans cars. But at any rate, there's that one. And then the other one I got, and this is the other original version of this kit because this, is, again, is a 1984 original, is this, the 84 Le Mans winning car, the uh, Newman livery, uh, the, the Pierre Plant Imperial Newman car. Uh, the decals in this, I don't believe, are exactly technically correct because I've seen a couple of different fill-in sheets for this. I have bought a completely new sheet from Studio 27 who did this uh, vehicle as well because, again, uh, my decals in this are a little bit past their prime. Um, you can see they're all yellow. They're all dry. Um, this is something I could redraw, but I, like I said, I... It was. I have enough things to do right now without redrawing stuff that I can already buy commercially. So I have another that I have that set coming from uh, Media Mix, and I also have the Braun Racing 1984 car coming as well. So again, this is another original kit. Uh, everything is factory sealed in here. Very nice. Um, you were all like, where did you get all these 956s? Again, these were all uh, Japan cars. Um, <laughs> I love the fact that. They are showing also on the side of here, hey, look, you could buy the Newman car. I already bought the Newman car. And then there's here's the swap shop one. This is the one I was talking about that I wanted to do. Unfortunately, this car, as it ran in Le Mans, did not have the aero discs on the rear wheels. It only had them on the front wheels. And the rear wheels are a set of mesh BBS wheels. 
And the only way you get mesh BBS wheels is to uh, buy the... Uh, oh, buy the Kenwood car. Oh, we're going to make that later. <laughs> Skull Bandit. I think I can get a set of these through IndyCal. But at any rate, uh, is to get is to buy a set of the of the uh, wheels from the uh, one of the other kits I'm going to show you here because these are the wheels that are in this kit. BBS fronts and these big five mags in the back. These don't, you know, the five mags are most of these. In both of these uh, situations are covered with aero discs, so you don't even. It doesn't even matter what the wheels are. It doesn't even matter what the wheels are. So there's that, and then I got a couple of the reissues. A couple of these, these two, the Newman car and the original Rothless cars have never been reissued that I know of. But these cars, a couple of these, were reissued later in life. This was a 2009 reissue. This is the Kenwood 1984 car. So these decals are all nice and fresh, and they're all bright white and everything. It's totally awesome. Um, you get a more traditional Tommy box, the sides here, and then it's just more about the kit. But this car, as well as the the other car, have these deep dish <laughs> wheels for the back, which is what I need. Because they look how much look how much wider the fronts are from the back. I sent my wheels and tires so that they would fit off to Michael Newport of the former Buckeye Scale Auto Parts, or uh, BSAP. And that was two and a half years ago. And I, because what I wanted, I had the original set, what I wanted him to do was basically take, cut the, the center out of the front wheel, put it into a new wheelbarrow, a, a turn, you know, a nice aluminum, real aluminum wheelbarrow, and put it into the back wheels, and then take that mag and put it back into the, and cut the wheel down to be the same size as the front because the front gets an aero disc and it doesn't matter what the heck the wheel looks like because it's going to have this air disc in front of it. Uh, you know, Mike and I were really good friends and now we're not <laughs> because I paid for those wheel part of those wheels up front and I've never gotten them back, which kind of annoys me, but anyway. any rate. This is the last of the 956s. It is the 1985 24 hour Le Mans car, the Canon livery. Again, this is the later reissue from, I think, 2008. Uh, this has the cartograph decals. I'm pretty sure that, uh, like most things in the world that were reissued later on, these decals are missing things. Uh, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you. I, I just thought about that now because I'm looking at this and I don't see any wheel markings. So this does have the 24 hours of Le Mans uh, privateering part, which is the thing with the C-Class and the Le Mans with what year it was in, but it does not have any tire markings. So, I'm guessing that uh, the tire marks on... I, I'm going to have to see what if they were still running Dunlop that year or not. I might need to buy a couple sets of the replacement sheets. Um, I'm not supposed to replace the sheets, but just figure out what the replacement sheets are and create a set. <laughs> I didn't think about that. There's no no wheel, uh, no tire decals. If I go back to the original ones, what were these sponsored by? Dunlop. So these are Dunlop sponsored cars, and I'm guessing that there are, if not Dunlop sponsors, on the decal sheet. I mean, there are Dunlop decals on the decal sheet. I mean, I know that part. That's not what I'm arguing about. But the I, the tire decals. I bet you there's. Goofy, upside down, inside out, drive transfer tire decals for these kits. I'm gonna guess. I'm not gonna sit here and dig through this. I gotta go to work. <laughs> but yeah, it just suddenly occurred to me. Yeah, these reissues, they don't have any tire decals and they don't have any Dunlop sponsors. So I'm gonna have to go uh, look these cars up and see because <laughs> there's Dunlop tire decals on this one. Um, this has shell sponsorship. Bosch sponsorship. I don't see any Dunlop livery on here. Oh, wait, there's Dunlop decals there. It's actually on the car. Yeah. And then I'm assuming these are the inside out tire decals. Maybe not. But at any rate, this car does. But apparently the uh, the, the Canon car was a little bit past, you know, because here's the upside down Dunlops for that. And 
the Dunlops are on this decal sheet. So this reissue got Dunlop livery, but the other one with the cannon car did not. So now I'm going to have to look up the cannon car and see what decals are missing and see if I can just get a set of Dunlop wheels, t tires for that, or uh, tire decals for that just to make it look good. But at any rate, on to the Hobby Link Japan box because, oh my God, we're so, so far into this video. More race cars. Are you shocked? I'm not. First up, the reissue of the Toyota of the uh, Honda Civic Team Yamato car. Uh, this first one of these, the racing version of this, came out as you know uh, as a modified reissue of the new Tool SB1 Civic, probably about 18 months ago at this point, maybe two years. This is for the livery for the 1982 Suzuka 1000 kilometers. So uh, you get a slightly different livery on this car uh, than it had in the original offering. Uh, so that's cool. I just like this kit in general. It's a it's a very cool uh, kit in the first place. The decals look awesome, and I'm trying to pull this out of here to see. Try to see if there's a uh, mention of what how this car did in this race. I cannot find anything in the quickness here. I know they won the actual um, the actual. Uh, Championship in 1981, 1983. Um, I need to do a little digging, see where this kit, car finished in 1982 in that race. Next up, we have the reissue of the Toro, Corolla 11 AE 101 as the 1993 car with this five Zajin uh, livery on it. Very cool. Paint the car white. Decals do uh, everything else, I believe. Let me take a break before I rattle that off for sure. Let me make sure see if the roof has to be painted a different color if the decals cover the roof as well. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Nope. Decals for the roof. So uh, the roof is not totally covered. Basically, you get these decals here that are the roof pieces. See? Here's the part of the windshield and the header. So this will be uh, the top of the right, the top of the driver's side or well, passenger side in Japan, top of the driver's side. So Left side of the car, right side of the car, as far as the roof. And that covers the roof decals. Uh, so you do literally just paint this car white. It's very cool to see them expanding this car out. Uh, all of your AE 101 Levins prior to this are all uh, 1992 season. So this is the first time they've done the 93 season. They did include the correct wheels in here, which is nice. Uh, I don't know where these wheels are, are as far as what they have created for them and before. These might be Civic wheels. Uh, as far as there being, uh, oh, I can't think of what the name of the wheel company is. Right? They're Ankies. As far as them being Anki racing wheels. Uh, the Civics ran these in the uh, the N1 uh, Super Takio uh, series. But I hope to see more of them expanding existing kits into other seasons. They did all of the 1994 Honda Civics at this point, so hopefully they'll continue. Uh, speaking of making something out of nothing, you have this, which is the 1994 Grand Japanese Grand Touring Car Championship Lancia 037 Rally Kit. Now, this is cool because of, we talked about it before. It's a one-off car. What is not cool about it, however, is the fact that there's a lot of uh, things you're going to have to do to make this car even close to being correct. Obviously, it's sitting a lot lower than the, to than the thing does in Rally. Second of all, it's got a set of work, work uh, Meister three-piece wheels on here. Good luck uh, finding them in the box because they're not there. They did not update the wheels. The wheels in this kit are still the rally wheels that come with the kit normally. This big metal thing in here that you can see is the fuel tank. Uh, aside from it being this wide, it also goes down to the floor and it sits about probably two, three inches proud of the actual floor level. So if you want to make this correct, you need to scratch build yourself a fuel tank. Because, hey, let's put the fuel tank inside the car with the driver. That's a great place for it, right? Um, beyond that, the decals are correct. And you might need to do some work as far as these pillars uh, that hold up the mirrors go. This turned into just a giant crap shoot as far as the actual car did because it was... The car is not designed, obviously, you know, an 037 is the engine in the back. There's not a lot of cooling going into the car that way. Uh, your engine intakes are basically these things right here. Um, it's not designed to be run at a high speed for long periods of time. It's a rally car, stages, weather is going to be, you know, not necessarily totally hot all the time. Um, here's a good picture of the 
side of the car showing you the work motion over the work uh, Meister three pieces. Now, Aoshima does make these wheels. The problem is uh, they've all evaporated as far as I can tell. I'm assuming because, well, uh, everybody knew this kit was coming out. Everybody knew they needed the, the wheels and they went out and bought them. So, in addition to scratch building the, the scratch building the uh, fuel tank, getting new wheels, getting a, getting another set of tires. We talked about this in the first video about this. This kit does include, and if I could pull all this out of here, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but there are slicks in here. These are not treaded like street tires like a rally car. These are slicks, but they're two they're two sizes. Like they're well, they should be technically in a rally car. Plus, you have to fit the wheels that came with this kit, or else you'd never actually be able to build it. The real car, these are 18-inch rims all the way around, right? 18 in back, 18 in front. When this car ran as a rally car, it ran 18 inches in the backs and 16s up front. So you need another set of wheels for the front wheels, in addition to needing the wheels just in general. Also, on the car, on the B-pillar, they included they put a fuel filler in. It's kind of hard to see in this picture, but it's, it's on the B-pillar right here. It feeds into this fuel tank, because obviously the car didn't run that fuel tank in rally. In a rally car, there will be another seat here for your navigator. Now, they did include that. Now, you can argue about how well the decal is going to look compared to, you know, scratch building something with three-dimensional actual pieces. And I don't know why we can't focus on this. There we go. Focus on this decal sheet. But they did include a decal for the fuel filler. So, if you don't want to go totally, like, balls to the walls, as it were, as far as scratch building, that at least is included in this little piece here is the wing brace, because the wing on the back of the car not designed to be run at high speed either. So... Otherwise, I mean, it's a really nice set of decals. Uh, I believe these are, um, if I'm not mistaken, these are Cartograph. Yes, they are realized by Cartograph. So Cartograph decals in here, always a good time. And uh, it's going to require a little bit of work to get this to look like the real car did. But it's also a very interesting piece of automotive history if you're into your Japanese racing. And then two more civilian kits. We're done. We're almost done. Out the door here. The wildly popular, who didn't need one, Toyota NTP-10 Japanese Taxi. Um, this is basically an unassembled promotional model, as far as we would consider it here in the United States. Uh, there are metal axles in the front and the back. The entire everything is molded into the chassis pan, the axles being the only part of the suspension. And then they give you a really, really detailed, probably five different color masking guide for how to paint the chassis. Uh -huh. This car can be built with this door either all slid all the way open to show off the interior or mounted closed like it's shown here. I don't know if it's shown open here on the side of the box. There you go. Uh, there's two versions of this kit. One's molded in white, one's molded in black. The white the, the white one has a uh, sort of a plastic piece over the wheel, over the lug nuts. It has a clo you know, there the lug nuts do not show is basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, I like the open lug nut look a little bit better. Um, Let's take a real quick peek in here. <laughs> Look, pieces. Uh, your back windows are tint, pre-tinted already, so that's kind of cool. Uh, here's your body, and you got this, you know, some dunnage on the side here to keep it, the, the thing from collapsing in in transit. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where's the chassis? I don't want to show you guys that. Yeah, here it is, all the way down the bottom. So here's your chassis plate. It's pretty well detailed as far as everything that's on there, but again, everything that's on there is all molded in, and you just get a couple of metal axles. I don't know. You, know, you could make the argument it's 2019. There shouldn't, that shouldn't be there. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's probably not profitable otherwise to do all of the tooling for all of that. Um, but here is the... Here's the paint guide for the chassis. Oh yeah, why couldn't you just mold some of this stuff separately so I don't have to paint everything? But I mean, really, when you're doing something like this, it's probably going to be a shelf model. You're probably not going to enter this in competition. You probably could just paint the chassis flat black and be done with it, and no one would ever be the wiser. But it's still an interesting conversation piece. Go pick one of these up build it. You're going to be the only one at your model club that has one, I guarantee it. And then lastly, last kit in here, you have the Mazda Familia van. So this is a Toyota Pro Box with a Mazda logo on it. Yes, pretty much exactly. The Mazda Familia van, not to be confused with the Mazda Familia, the little three-door hatchback that was in, that existed in the 1980s, is a always been a rebadged something ever since they came up with the idea for it. Uh, it used to be a Nissan Cherry uh, 
van truck thing, and now it is a rebadged Toyota Pro Box. So it is a very, very uh, commercial van. This does not come with like the hubcaps that are available in the one special edition uh, version of the van. They want you to build this up, and I'm pretty sure the parts are in here. Let me take a peek real quick before I say they're not. Yeah, they are. Uh, they want you to build this up without any back seat and, and have just have a very large cargo area in the back because it is a cargo van. You cannot order a Mazda Familia with a, with back seats at, in real life. So it's just a cool thing. It'd be a nice little Japanese shop truck for your Japanese garage diorama. You got your Fujimi garage and tools series. I mean, why not, right? Um, there are metal stickers for the front rear Mazda logos in addition to decals, so that's a nice touch. There are window masks for all the windows, so that again is a nice touch. Not a bad kit, I mean, it's just, it's a Toyota with a Mazda logo on the front of it. So right now, apparently, that's what Mazda does, is buy other people's cars, because you think of the Mazda Flare, and it's a Suzuki Hustler, so. Anyway, guys, that's, that wraps it up. <laughs> Finally, dragging across the finish line. So, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you see some interesting things there. Uh, and we'll see you guys on the other side.